Hi everyone, my name is Mercedes. I'm with Rocky Nook. Thanks so much for joining us today for this webinar with Roberto Valenzuela. Before we get started, I just want to note a couple things. Uh, one is that uh, if you have not already purchased the Successful Professional Photographer by Roberto Valenzuela, you can do so with a coupon code that we offered in the email you received when you signed up for this webinar. That coupon code is 09RV40. I'll post that in the chat and that'll be in uh, the email you received tomorrow as well. So don't feel like you have to remember it now. Um, and also you will get an email tomorrow that will include the coupon code as well as a replay link to watch this webinar again. So if there's anything you miss or anything you want to go back and see, you'll be able to do that tomorrow when you receive that email from us with the replay video and the coupon code. Uh, one more thing I just want to let you know before we get started is that if you did enjoy the book, if you do already have it, um, or if you get it later and you really enjoy it then, it's really helpful to us and Roberto if you're able to review that book on Amazon or on the Rocky Nook website. We really appreciate seeing what you guys thought about uh, the books we published. And the last thing I want to let you know is that as this webinar goes, if you have questions, go ahead and submit them in the chat or in the Q&A box as you have them. But we're going to save all those questions for the end of the webinar and come back to them then. Feel free to submit them at any time. Just know that we're not going to answer them uh, until the end of, of the webinar. So without any further ado, I will go ahead and welcome Roberto. Uh, hi, Roberto. Go ahead and join us. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks so much. Everybody. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over to you. I'll okay. see you at the end. See ya. Hey, guys. First, I want to say thank you for coming today. I know you have better things to do, but here we are joining together. This is my very first webinar on my latest book, The Successful Professional Photographer, which I think comes at a very good time <laughs> because we... I think this book is more necessary now than ever because I wrote it to help you reboot your, your businesses, reboot, restart your, 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 your successful career as a photographer. If you're trying to make money, making a living, uh, maybe photography is a side hustle. If you're trying to do anything related to your career, if you're tired of just spending money on gear and you, you would like to maybe get some money back, <laughs> it would be very helpful to understand how this business of photography actually works and I and I wrote the book in the most 2020 way like modern approaches I have a college degree three of them actually in consumer behavior and uh, that's a branch of marketing in the business school that taught me the psychology of why people buy what they buy so when you when I what I studied in college was if you have a product or a service, what determines a client to buy from you or versus buying somebody else? What are the psychological um, elements that are happening in the head? What is happening in, in your client's mind that they decide maybe this is not for me or maybe you are the perfect person for them? Um, why do some photographers make a, have a ton of clients and, and, and a lot of them can't even find someone to like even find them on the internet? Um, do you ever find, for example, that you have your pricing structure and your pricing structure becomes more of a problem in, if you're selling collections? So if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, you, you find your collections to just be collections. They are, they are empty list of items with prices. If you are one of those photographers, which I was too for a while, by the way, that has packages like here's and here's some items here's collection one collection two whatever it is and then you have some numbers what goes on in your client's mind when they see that and what can you do to really refine really refine that package so you hit the perfect chord on your clients where your clients go wow that's great that's exactly what i want that's, that's exactly do this you want to be able to get your products and services to sell themselves because the client is already interested in buying those things whether they know it or not okay there's three kinds of clients in photography okay and we'll, we're going to discuss this in, in the book i go over every kind of client there's only three and if you understand what kind of client is sitting in front of you you will be able to put together the perfect price list, the perfect collect products that is going to be a home run to those people, not just generic price for everybody, 
but to those exact people. That, my friends, is how you get it done. You got to cater things to the specific needs and wants of your clients. So I hope this book gets, it gets in the hands of every single person watching this and every single person in the country that does photography as a business because it's going to be incredibly helpful to you to read this and actually apply what the book says. Read it carefully and apply it. So let's get started. Also, Mercedes, um, is there any way I could actually see some questions or if people have a question, could you answer that? Could you ask me or how does that work? Uh, there's both the little Q&A tab at the bottom that, that you could look at if you want, or if I see something that comes up, I can go ahead and uh, just chime in and ask you that question. Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Give me a second. Roberto has been waiting on a package today, which of course we figured would arrive during this webinar. So he'll just be a minute uh, and then he'll come back and, and get back into this. Thanks for your patience today. We know it's all a little bit weird with so many people working from home right now or schooling from home. So thanks for joining us and sorry for this brief break in the webinar. Right, thank you. I didn't want you to leave. Uh, I, was, I wasn't gonna be here. Oh, you were? No, I, I'm only here to wait for people. Okay, well, that was hilarious, exactly when we got started. But as they say in Murphy's Law, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So Mercedes, how does it work with questions? So people can submit questions in the Q&A box, which I think you can see at the bottom of your Zoom application. Uh, and then you can view them all there. I can either ask them to you as they come up or we can wait until the end and answer all the questions at the end. Ask me as they come up because I'm on full screen on my keynote, so I don't see anything. Okay, sounds good. Okay, let's get started, guys. Let's see here. Um, first thing I want to say um, be, before we get started, the, the book is split into three sections. The first section is how to get discovered. The second section is how to get hired. So by that means once people discover you and they are in front of you and the, you, you have the chance to book them, you'll, you'll probably have experience that sometimes the meeting goes really well, but then and they don't book you or something goes wrong at the meeting and they don't book you. That's very frustrating. And in the third part of the book is how to actually make good money by customizing everything in a customer centric pricing structure that we're going to discuss. So that's the three breakdown of the book, how to get discovered, how to get hired and how to make money. Simple, straight to the point. The first part, uh, I'm not an SEO expert. I, I do know a little bit about it. And I wrote, I had uh, assistance on this chapter from a friend of mine. Uh, but I do have to say SEO is, is key on. Um, so we're, let's begin on how to get discovered. And I, I'm not, this is not an SEO uh, presentation. I'm just going to spend five minutes on it. You have to invest a good half an hour to half an hour, at least every single day, Monday through Friday on SEO. You have to do it. You want to make money in photography. You have to spend at least 30 minutes a day, not every week, not every month, every single day. It has to become a priority for you. To, to, um, to get people to find you. The only way you're gonna be found is if you have all these personal connections with the right coordinators or the right people in, the, in, in, your, um, in, your, in your market. So if you're a portrait, baby, if you're like a baby photographer, or a newborn or maternity photographer or a high school senior photographer, you need to have connections with those people. Those connections can get very expensive and they're hard to find and they're hard to keep up. But SEO is always there. If people type anything on, on, on their search engine, on their phones, on anything, they need to be able to find you. So the first thing is you have to go into, into the back end of your website, okay? And, and, and start typing phrases on, on that metadata on per picture that you type on every blog post. Everything that you do has to, you have to think about how, what are the phrases that are people are going to be searching for, for example, um, I am a Los Angeles portrait fashion ed editorial photographer. I shoot weddings as well. So I would have phrases like Los Angeles portrait photographer. That is a phrase people will look online. If, if they're getting married, if you're getting married, or, or if you're a high school senior, the parent of a high school senior, and you want to find out about who's out there, you're going to type high school senior photographers in Los Angeles, Los Angeles high school senior photographers, high school senior photography. 
these variations of words and phrases, you want to be able to make a list. And, and when you are writing on the back end of your website and you're saying like, this photo was taken of blah, 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 high school senior, um, as a high school senior photographer. So you start talking in this, you start writing these keywords and then Google is going to basically crawl through the webs and find those keywords. And when somebody types anything related to those, you will be higher and higher ranked. Okay, so that's basically that way that works. These people here that you see on the picture on the right, um, like let's say you, you are an, uh, a newborn photographer, okay, like I said, which by the way is crazy, crazy money if you're in the new, newborn world. Parents spend crazy money on that, okay? Um, children portraits is a keyword. Maternity portraits are, are keywords. These are keywords, so you separate them. Children portraits, two keywords. Maternity portraits, newborn portraits, baby portraits, baby pictures. Type all these things into the back end of your website and you will see, you will climb. I mean, look at the results on the picture on the right. I put newborn photographer in Los Angeles. There is 2,760,000 results. <laughs> if you don't do this, if you don't start typing copy, so if you don't start typing copy on the back end of your photos, okay, you are going to be found in search 1,732,464, which is on page 64,000 on Google. You will never be found, in other words. You want to be you want to be on the first two or three pages, okay, of what you do, and you have to spend time. You can hire someone to help you with with a copy. You can do it yourself, but it's a very easy thing. If you don't invest thirty minutes a day on on SEO, you're probably not going to be on the first two or three pages in in Google, and people will have a very hard time finding you. Hey, Roberto, okay. we have a question, real quick. Yeah. Uh, so the SEO terms, are you going to add, should people add those to their file names as well? So should they be naming their photos such as like Katie Matt, wedding photographer, Seattle? No, um, I think the title of your, the title of your photo and the description are two very different things. The title of your photo, you want it to be just descriptive of what it is. If I shoot a wedding at the Beverly Hills Hotel, I might call my photo reception photograph at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Um, you, so when people search Beverly Hills Hotel, that reception photo will show up. If people type reception photos, that, re, that photo will show up because it's got those keywords. It's got the word reception. It's got the word Beverly Hills. It's got the word hotel. So you want to name, you, you want to just name it. In your description is when you elaborate, okay, heavily on everything about, that. this is the next slide, by the way, it's the copywriting. This is where you have the little box in the back end of your website and you, you have your title, uh, Brad and Groom, Portrait, Beverly Hills Hotel by Roberto Valenzuela, okay? You go to the next, you go to the description. You have to do these four little bullets. Very simple, I kept this very simple for you guys. Write a lot, okay? It's like you have to write a lot, write a ridiculous amount of valuable and accurate descriptive information on that page. No one's going to read it anyway. The only one that's going to read it is Google, and that's what you care about. But if you have like a, like a beautiful portrait of a high school senior at, at the, I don't know, at the farmer's market in Los Angeles, okay, you would have to say, the colors of the farmer's market, paint the picture, the, the amount of stores in the farmer's market, all of these matters, okay? The, um, the, the, the weather, the, the time that you shot, the location that you shot it, uh, find the stores that are nearby. For, for example, let's say you have like a taco shop and you have like a vegetable shop. Look, look at the names of those things and type those names too. Like we were near the, uh, Francisco, Francisco's veg vegetable stand. And during that time that we were there, we were able to come up with this photo because the light reflected blah, blah, blah. So the more you talk about where you are, exactly what happened, exactly what they're wearing, the time of day, everything, the location, you have to imagine that you're painting a picture. Okay. If you do that, when people type anything about high school seniors in anywhere in that area, you will have a higher chance of being found. And when I mean write a lot, I'm talking 
as much as you can. Like, don't, don't worry. Don't think it's ridiculous. Just keep going. Okay. The, uh, the information has to be valuable. So don't write like things that don't bring, don't bring any value. You just want to bring value to the people, anything that can bring any value, write it down. Okay. Um, if you're in the wedding world, talk about who made the dress, what happened at the, why the Beverly Hills hotel, what are some of the features of the Beverly Hills hotel that you like? What, what was the, uh, what was the lighting doing because of the Beverly Hills hotel architecture? So if you type, if somebody says Beverly Hills architecture, your photos might show up because you typed that in your copy. It has to be valuable to people. If you don't provide value, Google will not, it, you will not, it, it will not go well for you in Google. Make we have it, a couple of follow-up questions, Roberto. Sorry, I feel bad interrupting you. Um, people are wondering if they should be using these uh, keywords in the actual file names of their images. Yes, and also in the description. So put it on the file name, put it on the description. In the file name, keep it, keep it nice and short, five, six words. In the description, write 500, 1,000 words. Does that make sense? You just want to keep writing. As long as you follow these little rules right here, make it accurate, make it valuable, make it specific, make it descriptive, and paint a picture of what happened and what's happening at that, at what happened during the day. Paint a very clear picture in writing and you will succeed in SEO, okay? There's a lot more to SEO than that, of, of course. And I, and I am by no means an SEO expert, but I know, I, I know a little bit, I know enough to get in trouble. And I do know that you do have to picture, paint a picture in your client's minds, okay? And I do want to tell everyone listening that you do have to invest time. This is not something you can just be like, oh, whatever. If you don't do it, you just won't be found. It's very simple. And uh, I think you kind of answered the next question, which is, you know, do, do they add this SEO in each gallery or with each photo? And I think you answered it, that it's both. Uh, it, each photo has to have this. Okay. So if you have 500 photos in your three, if you have 20, let's say you have 50 photos on your website, 50 photos, each photo has to have this. If you write a blog post, the blog post is going to be all text anyway, put all the keywords in there, put the phrases that you want people to find you for. Um, your photos, when people type anything, you want to be found, okay? You just want to make it easy for people to find you. And the book that I just wrote, The success, Successful Professional Photographer, has quite a bit of information on how to be very specific and very clean with your SEO on, on what you write on your photos so you guys can succeed, okay? Um, I can't talk about getting found if we don't discuss social media, okay? Social media is the way people find you. So SEO, the most important. Social media, second or, or at the same level as, as SEO. I would consider SEO the most important and I would consider social media the second most important. Now there's two kinds of social media approaches. There is passive and there's active. If you are a passive Instagrammer, it means you post a, a cool photo, um, you don't provide anything or no value. It's just, here's my picture. There it is. People passively go through the feed. They look at it. They, they, they swipe. There's nothing. You're not engaging your audience. It's just a photo. And you're, you're probably thinking, well, isn't that engaging? No, it's not, not engaging. I, uh, an active feed is engaging. So a passive photo is a photo of you putting a portrait of your, of your uh, maternity photo shoot and you don't say anything exciting about it. When a, when a, when a potential client is looking or potentially finds you because of your hashtags, which, which of course, that's why the third bullet says, you have to make everything searchable. That hashtags are the SEO of social media. Hashtags are the SEO of Instagram and the, and the SEO of Twitter. So, and the SEO of Facebook. So if you don't hashtag, you're not gonna be found because you're not searchable. But a Passive feed is you posting a nice photo and basically that's it, no value. Nothing else happens. People look at it, that's nice, they move on. An active feed is a feed that engages your clients. You ask them a question. Why do you guys think about this beautiful location? Why do you, I, I like, this is, uh, this is when everything comes together, look at the results of this amazing picture. What do you guys think? Uh, I love this area because of these reasons. These are the three reasons why I love this photographing in this location. Look, look, look at the results. And then people want to say, what are the three reasons why you love shooting in that location? You're providing value. Okay. Do something like call to action. Check out, uh, you, if you're offering, you, 
if you're offering some sort of um, maternity photo shoot uh, sale on the, the months of August, September, October. Say, hey guys, I'm gonna be doing something in these three months where you're gonna get, we're gonna do this kind of set. Come, come join us, we're gonna do 20 minute sessions. It's gonna be amazing. Um, click here for info on how to book your appointment. You have to get people to be like, what's the next step? They saw your photo, you provided value on your description, and then there is something else that they can do, like click on a link or find in more information about what you're saying. That is an active feed. If you can provide, every, not every time you have to have an active post, but if you can provide a lot of active posts, your, your overall rank in Instagram is going to go up exponentially, which will make you found, which is why people have 20 followers and other people have thousands and tens of thousands of followers. If you provide value in your Instagram feed, you will be found and you will be followed and your following grows and your business potential grows. Okay. So um, I, another thing that I see people basically make, and this is something that I wrote on the book very specifically, is you need to understand that clients react very positive to a, to a theme. So if you have a branding to your social media look, if you have a look that is associated with you, you are going to be aesthetically pleasing to your client's eyes and they're going to identify your look. As soon as they see a photo, they don't even have to read the name. As soon as they see the photo, they know it's you. That's what you want. How do you achieve that? By, by creating a look and a feel that's consistent. Look at the photos right here. Look at figure number one. This is straight a screenshot out of my book. Look at figure number one. Uh, that's a photo that has a, 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 bit of a, a bit of a look, okay? It looks pretty good. And then you have those two blue squares that seem to be outliers. They seem to stand out. Those, if you look at, if you stand back right now and you take, you take a foot away from the screen and you look at the, top left picture, you're going to see those blue squares popping out. You kind of want to avoid that, okay? Look at figure 1.2. That one is consistent all the way through. It's a pastel color all the way through. So if, if you open up Instagram and that figure 1.2, you're going to have a very aesthetically pleasing look. Why is that important to making money? Because clients don't know you. And if they see that you have a style, if they see in your feed that you, are, you, you have a very clean look, you're very specific, that means that you are true as an artist. You know who you are as an artist. You know what you're going to provide to your clients will know, but if they hire you, they know what they're going to get versus a feed who's all over the place. And then people are like, okay, here's a photo of your child's, your child, uh, your child's lunchbox. And then here's a photo of your coffee. Um, your coffee foam art, and then you have three or four of your, of, of your work, of your maternity photo shoot, or your high school senior, or your wedding. It doesn't make any sense. You are all over the place. You're crazy. No, no, you're just going to close out and move on, okay? You want to have a look, and that look has to be specific and aesthetically pleasing. Look at the, look at the bottom left picture, 1.3. That's a consistent theme. That's another consistent theme. If you open up that and you look at those photos, you're going to be, okay, this photographer has that kind of dark, moody look to him or her, and that's what I'm going to get if I hire them. Boom. Don't be afraid of your color schematics. It can be crazy. It can be whatever. As long as it's a consistent look and theme, there is an audience for everybody, okay? So just if, you're, if your audience that you're trying to reach likes the pastel type colors, then do that as your, as your feed, if, if that's your style. But if, this, if the customers you're trying to reach are more the edgy, cool, modern, awesome, whatever, then try a cool, modern, edgy color scheme that's going to relate with those people. Obviously, the, the pastel colors are not going to work. So your Instagram feed has to be respected. It has to be respected. It has to be looked at. It has to be paid attention to. And if you do that, if you spend the time, you will be compensated, okay? Um, at the bottom here, it says, become a Pinterest style resource. I just mean, put photos up there and describe enough on your Instagram comment to provide, to make people inspired by your photos. Let them save your photos. You, you can go on Instagram, look at the photo that you just posted and click on the statistics and see how many people saved your photo. You want to do, you want to pay attention to that statistic 
The more people save your photo, the more people are finding your feed like a resource, like a Pinterest style resource. You want that, you want to go for it. Do research. If this photo gets saved five times, but this type of photo gets saved a hundred times, start posting more of those more of those photos that were saved a hundred times. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about how to actually make money as a photographer. Um, we love spending money as photographers. We have cameras. We buy the latest mirrorless, two mirrors, five mirrors, one mirror, no mirrors, whatever the hell the companies put together, we go and we buy it because it's the latest and greatest, but we forget that we also, we also have to go make money too. As, as fun as photography is, it has to pay you. You have to be able to pay your bills with it. I wrote this book, The Successful Professional Photographer, with this in mind. I want to make sure you all get compensated for your work, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying compensated like making a little bit of money here and there. I'm talking about making real money, okay? Like enough money to live on all right enough money to take a vacation with your family and make no mistake about this photography is something that's never going to go away it is a need and a want from for many people everybody in the world appreciates photography a photo of your son is going to be appreciated a photos of your wedding are going to be appreciated for photos of your mother and your father your grandparents are going to be appreciated important events in your life need to be photographed because photo photography brings memory. It allows you to relive those precious moments in our lives. It allows you to see your, the most precious people and have a portrait of them that you can see every day and brings joy and happiness to your life. So photography is not going anywhere and you can make money. You have to cater to those people. Let's get started with that. Any questions so far on this? Yeah, we do have a question, um, which is how, how do they see the statistics on Instagram photos? Okay, let's take a look. Um, if you go to your phone and you go to, for example, I posted this photo of my wife, um, my maternity photo. You click on, you, you click on, to, see that blue where it says view insight? Okay, click on that. You have to have a business account, not a, not a, not a regular account. Okay, um, this for their statistics right there. This photo, this photo has uh, was saved seven times. Okay, so check this out. It says right there, seven times it was saved. Now, if you go to the one of my son, if you go to one of my son kissing my kissing uh, the belly of my wife, I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, uh, let me show you the photo first. There is the photo, my son kissing the belly. Go to view insights. Now look, this one has a reach of 6,955. It was saved 12 times. It has all, all those comments. And, and obviously uh, this was more successful. What does that tell you? Photos of a baby kissing the belly are more successful than photos of just the pre pregnant woman. So if you include another level of cuteness into the photo, you will probably get more, um, more engagement in your feed. Okay. Um, guys, this is where we start talking about how to make money. And I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible because it can be a little heavy. This is why you have to just get the book and read it because this is a short presentation. So I cannot get, I cannot go over it in the, in great detail. But if you get the book, you will be able to thoroughly understand this stuff. But there is three different kinds of people that are out there looking for photography. There is the people that are motivated by memories. In other words, people who want to remember an event. If you're getting married, you want to remember your wedding. So that's, that's a memory motivated client. Okay. Then you have clients that are self-motivated. Self-motivated clients are people who are photographing themselves. So they want pictures of themselves. For example, if you're doing... Um, if you're trying to celebrate your 40th birthday and you want to take a portrait and remember that, remember what you looked like in your 40s, that would be self-motivated. If you want to hire a photographer to do a boudoir session and you want to give it to your husband or maybe you want to do it to your, for yourself, that is a, a client that is self-motivated. They are pictures of themselves and, and, and that's a very different kind of client than the client that's 
uh, motivated by memory, okay? Um, if you're doing a family portrait of somebody, okay, if people are looking for a family portrait, that's memory motivated. They want to remember their family. They want to remember that their family in that state in their life. That the children, the mom, the grandpa, they want to remember that and they hire a family photographer for that. Okay. Then you have need motivated people. Need motivated are people who just need a photographer to, because work told them you need a headshot. Like if you're an actor, you're going to need a headshot. So if you're a headshot photographer, you're going to be catering to people that are need motivated. But if you're an actor, if you're an actor, you're not only motivated by need. Yes, you do need the headshots for, for, your, for your agent, but you also are self-motivated because it's photos of yourself and you are the product and you're trying to sell yourself. So there's where the juicy information comes in. Let me explain. Memory motivated people are people that are trying to get, they are willing to spend more money on creating better and more memories. Okay, listen carefully, guys. If you have clients that are coming to you because your product or service is, is catered to memory people, like a wedding photographer would or a family photographer, these people are willing to pay more money if you can provide them with more memories. For example, um, let's say you're a wedding photographer. You could, if you don't know this information, you could do your wet, you could show up with your clients, you show them your package or collections. They choose a collection one, then they pay you, then you shoot the wedding, you got paid, deals done, you send them the products, you're good to go. If you know a little bit more about consumer behavior, which is what's in this book, you can say, okay, you are a mem memory motivated client. Yes, I can sell you on the wedding, which is obviously the reason why you're here. But, but if you are motivated by memory, maybe I can also offer her a photo shoot of, of the dress rehearsal or when, when, the, when she's going with her friends to try on wedding dresses and they drink champagne, mom, and they bring their, their, uh, their sister and their maid of honor and they have a little party and they, they try on dresses and everybody goes, woo, you look beautiful on that. And everybody, she tries on six or seven wedding dresses. That's an event worth remembering. So a, a bride might be like, I never thought about that, but that sounds really cool. I would love that. And now you made another $1,200 because you have information that they are motivated by memory and you just offer them a memory motivated product that they did not think about. That's why you need to read this thing so you can be informed, you know? Self-motivated people, boudoir sessions, actors, headshots, anything like that. Fashion models are big time self-motivated. Boudoir clients or everybody who is self-motivated is willing to spend a lot of money on the most premium products you offer. They don't care about the memory. They only care about how they look like and how awesome the product is that's holding their pictures. So if you are informed on this, if you have knowledge about this, you could go to a self-motivated client and say, here's the three different kinds of uh, books I can put your boudoir photos in. This one here is the best one. It's the highest end. It looks incredible. You look like you're popping out of the paper. It's very pleasing to the skin. Salt, salt, done. Send me that one. Nobody wants the cheap one when it's your... <laughs> Nobody wants the cheap crappy book when you're, you're in the photos. Does that make sense? So if you have this information, you can cater the type of books you sell and, and the type of offerings you offer to the different kinds of people coming your way. The mistake us photographers make is we assume it's one size fits all, where everybody just gets whatever your packages are. Here are my packages, here's my collections, here are my prices, see you tomorrow. No, not see you tomorrow, see you never, because you didn't, you didn't strike a chord with your people. Read the book, read the book, listen carefully to what the book is saying, apply it, and you will succeed, my friends, you will succeed. Um, the next one is value creation tools. I'm going to go over this very quickly. If you don't create value, people won't pay you. People are willing to part with their money when they find value in what you're offering. People, especially now, uh, are very hard up in giving up their hard-earned cash, especially because most of us are employed in the country. So 
you have these four ways of creating value. You have, you have scalability. Basically, if the scalability means the more you offer, the more discounts you get. We've all seen this in action. If you buy two, the price is this. But if you buy eight, the price is that. It's cheaper per, per unit. That's just being scalable. But there's a, there's a technique to that that you need to know. It's not so simple. This, this, this book spends a lot of time in, in teaching you the secrets and the tips on how to best go about scaling a product. Okay, so read on when you get it, uh, but I'll move on. I'll move on now. The next one is incentives. Incentives are basically like financial incentives. What are the incentives for you to, to, uh, to, to part with your money? If you're asking people for $6,000 for a portrait shoot or whatever, what is the incentives for them to do so? The next one is negotiable items. Negotiable, negotiable items are items that when they ask you for discounts, when they say, hey, um, this photographer over here is offering, is, is giving us 50% off on his collections. Can you offer something like that? Uh, you need to have an answer. If you say, no, I don't give discounts, they're going to probably walk away. If you give the discount, you'll never get paid. Okay. You, you'll keep, you keep playing that game where you, you have to discount your stuff 50% and then 60 and then 80. And the next thing you know, you're discounting 99% and you're making 1%. You don't want to play that game. So this book teaches you strategies on how to deal with that. And those strategies are called negotiable items. Okay. The next one is personalization. When you personalize something to your client, to your specific client, it creates value. For example, when you buy a Tesla, uh, if you go to the Tesla website, it's all about customizing and personalizing your car to you. If you, if they didn't offer that, the personalization of the car, you might not be interested in the car. But when you personalize the car to specifically the color, the type of wheels, the type of car, the type of engine, the battery, and it feels like you're making it your own. It's like your own car. And that's consumer behavior. When you feel like it's you, it is about your personality. It speaks to who you are. You, you, will, you will find value and you will part with your money. Okay. So let's talk about scalable examples. We have a quick question, scalable. Roberto. Sorry. Let me grab a one. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead and walk. Go ahead and ask. Yep. Um, so one of the participants is asking, most of my discussions happen online or over the phone and clients want the quote first so we don't waste time. How can we make the best use of that scenario as a lot of cheaper photographers come in the picture in the meantime and steal the clients? See, that's all part of your branding. Like if you, if you have a certain persona in your branding already, the people that come to you might not be so, might not be so willing to start asking for discounts immediately. There is a certain level of respect that you put in your, that you put in your brand. When you go to Ferrari, when you buy it, when you go to Rolls Royce or Ferrari or Mercedes, you don't, you don't necessarily go to the person and start asking for discounts. You kind of know what you're going to get. You walk into Ferrari knowing you're going to be spending money and you're buying a quality product. If your branding, if your branding has that, that if you are valuing the quality of your product, product, not the quantity of your product, you create, you put a little cookie in your client's brain that says this photographer is about quality. It's about premium. It's about bulk. It's about discounts, whatever you're, you have to have a brand that you want to go for. If you want to go for the people that look for, for discounts, you can, because there's a lot of money to be made there too. There is a lot of money to be made in, in, in quick, quick turnaround photo shoots. Like if you're a high school senior and you want to, you want to be the guy that's bulk, you could charge 250 for a shoot and do them in 30 minutes. And you can do 10 of them in a day. Okay. You could make a lot of money if you want to work that much. What is the, what is the aura that you have about your branding in the internet about you? Okay. If, if it's, if it's like quantity and bulk, then people are going to possibly ask you if it's uh, more about the pre prestigious and care and love and passion and quality people will still ask you for a discount, but a lot less people will, will. And at least that's not the, the first thing that comes to their mind. 
okay? When you become a scarce resource, when you, you have 15 jobs you do a year, they're not gonna be asking for discounts because you can just move on to somebody else. So it just depends how you structure your branding online. Um, let me, I'm gonna talk more about discounts in a minute, okay, when people ask you for that. So let me get to it. Um, scalable examples. Now, when people talk about collections, usually the, the word on the street is to have three collections, collections one, two, and three. Um, that's good. The problem with that is that it doesn't give you, it, you're missing out on getting your client's foot in the door, okay? You're also missing out on, in some, on some side. They call it a big role in what they, in how, in how much they, they spend and what collection they buy. So let me explain. When you have collections of any kind, here's collection one, two, three, four, whatever it is, you wanna have this strategy, okay? You wanna have a basic collection, a collection, a real collection, which is collection one. So the basic collection, I don't consider that a real collection. I, I consider that just the foot in the door. It is to lure people, lure people into your, get them in front of you, whether it's on the internet, on Skype, Zoom, or physical meeting. The basic collection's job is to get people, get people's foot in the door. That basic collection's job is also to weed out people who cannot afford you. So your basic collection could be expensive enough to weed out those people who are just gonna be a waste of your time because they are not in, in, in the same scope of what you're trying to charge, just a different market. Not the wrong market, just a different market, okay? So your basic collection, it's, it's, it, it sets the pace, it sets the tone of what kind of client you're going for. And you have to have a client you're going for. If you don't have a client, if you're, those, if you're one of those people that will, 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 will cater to everybody, you're going to shoot no one, okay? You need to know who is your client and you cater to them. If you think everybody is your client, you're going to fail, okay? Collection one is the first real collection. Collection two is your target collection. That's the one you want people to buy. That's why it's called the target collection. Collection three is the show off collection or the showroom collection. That's the one that you get people to salivate over your products and services and you get them dreaming of, of having that for them, having those beautiful products and, and services that you're showing them for them. That's called the showroom collection. And the fourth one, uh, or the, the other one, when it's called the dream collection. That collection is, is just purely for psychology reasons. No one really buys it. In fact, some people do, but 99.9% .9 of people will never buy it. But it serves a very important purpose when you're trying to make money as a photographer. So I'll explain what this looks like now. Collection one is the collection you don't want people to get, but it's the first real collection. Collection two is the one you want people to, is the one you're going for. It's the one you want your clients to book. How do you book collection two? You show them collection three. Why does that work? Collection three is the collection that has all the cool stuff. It has the coolest products, the coolest time, the assistant. Like it's, 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 an, it's an amazing collection. It's a showroom collection. Um, when you cannot, when you look at it, you get, you get drawn to it. You're like, wow, I want that. You sh it's, it's basically how you show off what you're able to provide. When people see what an amazing array of products you have for that collection, they are now personally invested in that collection and a little piece of them wants it. Now, when, when they want it, that doesn't mean they can afford it, but their mind already has that little tickle in their brain that says, I want this. They begin to imagine themselves in that collection and they start to be to to imagine themselves in it. When they can't afford it, and if the price is too high and they can't afford it, what do they do? They go to the one previous, which is why it's called the target collection. You don't want to sway too far from the from the showroom collection, so no one's going to get collection one because you want to get as close as possible 
to collection three, which is your showroom collection. That's the one people are invested in. That's the one they saw. People buy what they see. But if what they see is beautiful and they want it, but unfortunately they can't afford it, they're, they're going to come up with every excuse and reason to try to get as close as possible to that collection. And the answer, the answer for that is collection two. That's why it's called your target collection. Now in the book, I go into further detail on how to approach that collection, the target collection, because you want your target collection to be your most profitable collection. So that's the strategy. Your target collection has to be the most profitable. You need to make the most money after expenses for that collection to become your target collection. Do not make the mistake of making the target collection so, um, so enticing to your clients because you're providing, you're giving them the world for nothing that you end up making the least amount of money. It's the opposite. You want to structure this in a way that your target collection becomes your most profitable collection. The dream collection is there to, to serve a purpose, is to put perspective, okay? My dream collection is $25,000 for a wedding. That dream collection is ridiculous, even though a few people have bought it. But it makes your showroom collection appear more affordable now. So my showroom collection is $15,000. My dream collection is $25,000. When you go from, when you see 25,000, your eyes are like, what the heck? But when you see that the, the showroom collection being only 15,000, now in, in, in a client's mind, that 15,000 sounds a lot more affordable, a lot more attainable than the, than the dream collection. So it, it creates this sense of, oh, okay, it's, it's not as expensive as the other one. Without the dream, Collection three will be like, oh my gosh, that's $15,000 because that's like the highest number they see, okay? But if they see a dream collection, they're like, oh man, that, that showroom collection is it's a lot cheaper, <laughs> you know? So it, it's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot to this, which is why there's, that's why I wrote the whole book, right? Any questions uh, on this stuff, Mercedes? No questions so far, keep going. All right, let's take a look at an example. Um, and by the way, this is actually an example that is a true example uh, from my own, my, own, uh, my own collections, okay? So for, this is an example of my, my bride and groom, my, my couple's portraits, and not weddings, couple's portraits, couples. So like I, I get hired to shoot couple's portraits all, all the time. Maybe they wanna celebrate their one year anniversary. Maybe they're celebrating their 30th year anniversary. Whatever the situation is, um, it has been a pretty big business for me to shoot couples pictures. So I, we go out and we do it. Here is my structure of how I do. I did that um, based on the the, the uh, anchored collections that we just talked about. The basic collection is the foot in the door. Look what I'm offering people. These are 30 minute sessions. Okay, these are very small. Um, I I will only do do this if it's within a mile of my studio. So I'm not going to be traveling to Pasadena, California from Beverly Hills to shoot a, a basic collection. I just won't do it. Um, it but if, if, if the photo shoot is within a mile of my studio, I will do it. And it's a 30 minute job. So when I start shooting, that's when the, that's when the 30 minutes begin. You get three to five retouched mid resolution digital photos. Okay. Why mid resolution? Because the high resolution is to sell prints. And then the price is, is, is the lowest. See, it's only one, one dollar sign. My next collection, okay, collection one, that is my target collection, okay? So my target collection is two hours. This is what I want people to hire, to, to book. It's a two hour session. It is, I'm willing to travel up to 10 miles from my studio. I do give you 10 or more, like maybe 20, uh, 10 to 15, whatever, mid-resolution digital photos. I don't give the full, the full rest because that's for printing purposes and they have to buy the prints, which is where I make a lot of money too. It's on the prints. Um, then you get $300 credit to get you enticed to buy prints. So if 
you know you're going to have a three you're probably going to be end up end up spending two thousand dollars in prints but if i don't give them the print credit then it may not get the engine running or the engine started to consider buying prints so that's why that's there and then the price is two dollar signs okay now check this out collection two is my showroom collection this one is a six i don't really want to do this this is just to show off for people to be like wow that looks amazing well of course it looks amazing it was a six hour session like look at the look at the bullet points six hours okay of course you're gonna get a lot of great stuff because you had six hours to do it multiple locations so we can go to location one location two location three you get the full resolution jpegs this time okay but not the full resolution tips because again what I do for printing, for printing premium photos, which is what this collection will give you. You get a thousand dollars print credit on this one from the a la carte menu. If you have a thousand dollar print credit, these people will spend three thousand or so, maybe four, maybe 25. But I can assure you very few instances in my, in my career have I given them the thousand dollar print credit and they only spent the thousand dollars they spend a lot more than that because you get them going this collection comes with a makeup artist and a hairstylist that goes with us the entire photo shoot who, who wouldn't want that you can do touch-ups you can touch up your makeup you can do whatever and then you also get a photography assistant uh, you get another photographer okay so this photographer different angle photos it can help me with lighting can help me with with a lot of different things the client benefits from having that second shooter or or assistant the price is three dollar signs the dream collection is a two to three day photo session anywhere in the world so if you're if you want me to go to um, romania or south africa i will go there full resolution jpegs 30 or more five dollar print credit okay makeup artist hairstylist duration all this stuff is going to be there throughout the entire shoot you get a photographer assistant anywhere in the world and you get an engagement book, any book type, any book type, leather, cloth, glass, acrylic, whatever you want, any size, 20 layouts, 30 layouts, 40 layouts, until the number of layouts is maxed out. And then we do master retouching on the photos that go into that book. And that price is $6 signs. It's crazy. Which in my case, it will be about $25,000. Okay, $25,000. I will go anywhere in the world and give you all of this stuff. So this is the way it works. When people come in to my, for portrait photos of, of couples, I show them collection two and they end up buying collection one. Collection one is the, is the best collection for me because it only requires a two hour commitment for me. It, I only do 10 miles from my studio. So it doesn't require that much time in incentive. I only, only give the mid resolution photos so it becomes the most profitable because they start buying prints because the prints will be in full you know in full rest or whatever and you give them the 300 dollar print credit so they end up buying two thousand dollars so that target collection is very carefully crafted by me to, to get the most the most pay for my time and my talent okay quick question roberto um, on the digital yeah. photos, do you put your brand watermarks or the wedding info or both? Um, I don't do that. I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think a lot of people put their, their uh, digital signature on the photo. I just think that doesn't look very, very um, elegant. Um, so I just don't do it. Um, the, the, photos, the photos that they get, the, if, if, the things, if people go online, to do galleries you have to be careful because then they can just take screenshots and then the screenshots become the photo and they don't end up buying the pictures like for print so you do have to put a watermark on them and a pretty good one uh to protect them uh because it's just people be people can be cheap and they, they don't want to pay uh, if you walk into my studio my entire studio is based on on buying prints when you walk in it's all about printing in fact, I'm teaching a printing class with Sue Bryce's uh, Portrait Masters in, in a week and a half. So check that out. It's in this year's Portrait Masters is a printing class. And, and I believe in prints because I make a lot of money on prints because the way my prices are structured, 
and the way my studio set up is all about buying prints. So when you buy collection one, people end up buying $2,000 worth of prints. And I only spent two hours on a, on, on a portrait session. So it's, it's actually quite profitable. You could even do two sessions like this in a day. Okay. Um, I'm going to go quicker on these because it's already almost an hour, but um, financial incentives are just incentives that people find that are money re related. Okay. So like I said, scalable incentives are where you, you give them more discount depending on how much more they buy. Simple enough. Straight discounts are when you give somebody a discount, like I'll give you 30% off if you book me. That's a financial incentive that you probably want to stay away from. However, I use it if I need to in order to work at a specific venue. So let's say I want to be one of the main photographers at the Beverly Hills Hotel and some bride is coming to me that's going to get married there and she wants a discount. I'll give it to her because I want to get that job. Okay. Um, be careful with that because if you do that, every single person in her circle is going to requ request the same discount you gave that person. Family and friends, I discuss this on my book very carefully because as a photographer, everybody gets asked for financial incentives if you are, if you are family or if you're a friend. And trust me, when people try to get you to do a portrait session of them, a maternity, babe, wedding, whatever, people become your friends very quickly. So they start, they start you know, touching, uh, catching up with you online. Hey, what's up, man? I was just thinking about you. And, and then like a week later, hey, man, you want to grab lunch? I was just passing by your studio. You want to grab lunch? And then you start, start getting suspicious because you know it's coming. And the question is, hey, man, I was thinking, um, you know, we're getting married. I would be great if you could shoot my wedding. And then this stuff will never, will never end. So the family and friends discount, this is the way I go about it. I give them a $25,000, I give them my dream collection. Sorry, I give them my, my showroom collection, which is 15,000. And I give it to them for 5,000. Plus all the expenses, plus second shooter, plus travel, plus every expense. The, the amount of money that you have to pay me to shoot your wedding on, on a friends and family discount, it's gonna end up costing you with expenses included and everything, somewhere between eight and ten thousand dollars anyway. Like five thousand for my time, which is you know, to a friend, it's like whoa, that's expensive. But considering you're actually getting a fifteen thousand dollar collection, they're like, wow, what a great discount! Fifteen thousand all the way down to five thousand. You are a true friend, Roberto. And I go, I am. And and then the um, the price of the books. And everything, it ends up being in another three grand or four uh, with paying second shooters at all of this. So it ends up being about $8,000, $9,000. It's expensive enough that people won't want to do it anymore. I don't want to be shooting friends and family weddings, but it's inevitable that people will ask you. But if you don't do it, you look like a jerk. And if you do it, you'll never get paid. So this is a great way to do it. You give them a great discount. You give them a lot of value but you're still making it expensive enough that they won't be able to afford it anyway. And people won't, will stop asking you for friends and family discounts. The paint creator is a financial incentive in the sense that when you're creating your products, um, a paint creator is something that you make people want. For example, the showroom collection is the paint creator because when you see it, and you can't afford it, it creates pain within you. You're like, oh man, I wish I had that. And, and you have that discomfort in your heart. That discomfort is the pain creator. The pain killer is the target collection. It's to say, well, I cannot get this, but I can get that. And that basically can be the solution. If you have a pain creator and pain killer strategy to your packages, you're gonna make a lot more money and you're gonna be a lot more successful and you won't have to be like a, like a car salesman to sell it. It will sell itself. So that's the strategy behind that. Um, and then the last things I want to say, this is the last part, negotiable items. This is where you can handle, this is a strategy for handling discounts. Negotiable items are items that are, you have to have these three, these three um, qualities to, 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 uh, to, a, to a negotiable item. A, a negotiable item has to be highly desirable. Two, a negotiable item must require minimal effort to produce. And three, 
it must require a minimal expense for you to produce. A negotiable item is the item you throw down when people ask you for a discount. So if you say, hey, can I get 30% discount because these other photographers are offering me 30% discount, can you match it? You say, well, I can offer you, what I can do is offer you this specific product or I can offer you this specific service. Um, that product and service, if it's a negotiable item, if it qualifies to, for a negotiable item, it's something that clients will want. Like it's highly desirable. They're like, oh yeah, that would be great. Okay. Um, or it requires minimal effort. Here's an example. Let's say in the, in the portrait world, in the portrait world, uh, if you shoot portraits or weddings, okay. A negotiable item for me is the size of the book. So if you have like an eight and a half by 12 inch book, but people are giving the, those clients discounts, I can actually give them a bigger book. I can offer them a bigger book. Okay. Without any extra charge as a negotiable item, it makes it look like I am trying to meet them the hardest. It makes them look like I am trying to, to, to make, to get their business and I'm offering them something of value. Like a bigger book is much better than a, a smaller book. Why is a bigger book a, a quality negotiable item? Because it's highly desirable. Everybody wants a bigger book or, or a nicer book. Okay. Most require, it, it requires, requires no effort for me to make it. It's just a tick on an order form. I can just say, okay, instead of an eight by 12, I just take 12 by 16 or nine and a half by 13. So I take something and that's the end of it. Okay. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to recreate an entire design. I don't have to do anything. I just have to tick an order form. And the third one, it doesn't cost me that much because I'm paying, I am paying the wholesale price of that, of that upgrade, not the retail price. So it cost me another $200, but because of that, I booked a $6,000 job. That is a psycho psychological play on consumer behavior. It allows you, negotiable items are like little weapons. They allow you to, to, to have an answer to people asking you for discounts. And this is very well described in the book. Okay. Um, so Mercedes, uh, that's the end of the, of the, of the presentation, but I wanted to just offer this to, uh, everyone going, everyone attending in May, 2020, I'm actually going to be doing my lighting conference in Tucson, Arizona. And I wanted to invite you guys to at least take a look and maybe want to join us. It's in a beautiful ranch in Tucson. I'm going to have four instructors teaching everything lighting. So it's going to be me. I'll be, I'll be teaching flashes. Jen Rosenbaum is going to be teaching how to handle portraits and everything with natural light. Joel Grimes is going to be teaching strobes and how to achieve those amazing portraits that he does. And it's in the most amazing ranch in Tucson. Like the experience is seriously beautiful. And then Rocco's not going to be able to come because of COVID, but I got Pratik Nike, which is one of the, one of the top editors or retouchers in the world. And he will be teaching you how to retouch your photos afterwards. So, um, we're going to be printing pictures. This is the ranch and we're going to, this is the class. This is one of the classrooms. It's all lighting based. Okay. All lighting based. It's all these people that you see here came from a different country. It's so much fun. Uh, we have barbecues at the end. Uh, it's just a really good time. And I think after COVID and all these crazy times by May, we should be clean and good to go. There will be no more risk. And I think everybody's eager to get together with people and learn and, and share a, a wine and, and share food and hang out and talk and, and be with people again in a safe environment, of course. So that's why it's not till May 2021. There are uh, 30 people signed up. There's only 35 spots left. So if you want to go, go to the website, which is um, thephotocreators.com. It's right here at the very bottom, thephotocreators.com. I'm going to give everybody the early bird discount of $13.95. It used to be $16.95, but because of COVID and I had to move the conference twice, everyone's just going to get it, get it for $13.95. And just to give you a perspective, my posing workshop is $1,500. This is four instructors for $13.95. So I think it's pretty amazing. I also started a pretty, um, I, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff on YouTube now. So I wanted to invite you guys to check out my YouTube channel which is just my name, Roberto Valenzuela. And I'm actually posting photos on how to practice photography and photography exercises and cool stuff like that. 
uh, that you can do at home because of COVID-19. Some things you can practice and improve your skills with using things like paper towels and dirty windows and things like that. Check out the YouTube channel for that. It should be really fun and make sure you subscribe. And with that, that's it. Hey, Roberto, we don't have any questions right now. Okay. So we, we did answer them as they came up. Um, so thank you so much for that presentation. I just want to remind everyone who tuned in that tomorrow we'll send an email, which will have a, a discount code for your book. If you haven't already bought it yet, you'll be able to do that with the coupon code that's in the email. And it will also have a replay of this uh, video in case there's anything you need to revisit or go back and look at again, or if you had to leave early or came in late, something like that. Um, so thank you so much, Roberto. And I had a great time. Hope everybody enjoyed it. It's, it's a little bit of uh, work to do, but I think it will lead to, to financial success in our, in our industry. So if, if you want to do what we do, you have to be able to make money <laughs> to do it. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, thanks well, so thank much for guys. joining us. And thanks to everyone who tuned in today. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Roberto. Right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.